How's it going, people? Well, I didn't get a chance to drink this in my last video. Little Paps Blue Ribbon. Woo! Nice. Chapter 19 of the Book of Mosiah. And it came to pass that the army of the king returned, having searched in vain for the people of the Lord. And now, behold, the forces of the king were small, having been reduced, and there began to be a division among the remainder of the people. And the lesser part began to breathe out threatenings against the king, and there began to be a great contention among them. And now there was a man among them whose name was Gideon. And he, being a strong man and an enemy to the king, therefore he drew his sword and swore in his wrath that he would slay the king. And it came to pass that he fought with the king. Kind of lacking in detail. <laughs> and when the king saw that he was about to overpower him, this Gideon guy, he fled and ran and got upon the tower which was near the temple. And Gideon pursued after him and was about to get upon the tower to slay the king. And the king cast his eyes round about towards the land of Shimlon. And behold, the army of the Lamanites were within the borders of the land. Now isn't that convenient? <clears throat> and now the king cried out in the anguish of his soul, saying... Gideon, spare me, for the Lamanites are upon us, and they will destroy us. Yea, they will destroy my people. And now the king was not so much concerned about his people as he was about his own life. Nevertheless, Gideon did spare his life. And the king commanded the people that they should flee before the Lamanites. And he himself did go before them, and they did flee into the wilderness. <laughs> Run away! And with their women and their children. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did pursue them and did overtake them and began to slay them. Now it came to pass that the king commanded them that all the men should leave their wives and their children and flee before the Lamanites. Now... There were many that would not leave them, but had, uh, but had rather stay and perish with them. And the rest left their wives and their children and fled. And it came to pass that those who tarried with their wives and their children caused that their fair daughters should stand forth and plead with the Lamanites 
that they would not slay them. God, shades of Lot and his uh, virgin daughters, or that other Lot character, unnamed and judges. Have my daughter. Take my wife, please. And it came to pass that the Lamanites had compassion on them. For they were charmed with the beauty of their women, white and delightsome as they were. Therefore the Lamanites did spare their lives, and took them captives, and carried them back to the land of Nephi, and granted unto them that they might possess the land, under the contentions that they would deliver up King Noah into the hands of the Lamanites, and deliver up their property, even one half of all they possessed. Everyone wants your substance. One half of their gold, and their silver, and all their precious things, and thus they should pay tribute to the king of the Lamanites from year to year. And now there was one of the sons of the king among those that were taken captives, whose name was Lemhi. <coughs> Whew, that was much better. And now Lemhi was desirous that his father should not be destroyed. Nevertheless, Limhi was not ignorant of the iniquities of his father's father, he himself being a just man. Just boring. And it came to pass that Gideon sent men into the wilderness secretly to search for the king and those that were with him. And it came to pass that they met the people in the wilderness, all save the king and his priests. Nope, okay. Uh, now, they had sworn in their hearts that they would return to the land of Nephi, and if their wives and their children were slain, and also those that had tarried with them, that they would seek revenge now that they've grown a set. <laughs> and also perish with them. And the king commanded them that they should not return, and that... <coughs> oh, there it is. And that they were angry with the king, and caused that he should suffer even unto death, by fire. And they were about to take the priests also and put them to death, and they fled before them. Just like that, they just got away. And it came to pass that they were about to return to the land of Nephi, and they met the men of Gideon, and the men of Gideon told them of all that had happened to their wives and their children, and that the Lamanites had granted unto them that they may possess the land by paying a tribute to the Lamanites of one half of all they possessed. <clears throat> and the people told the men of Gideon that they had slain the king, and his priests had fled from their, them farther into the wilderness. And it came to pass 
that after they had ended the ceremony, that they returned to the land of Nephi, rejoicing because their wives and their children were not slain, and they told Gideon what they had done to the king. And it came to pass that the king of the Lamanites made an oath unto them that his people should not slay them. And also Limhi, being the son of the king, the king that we met when uh, the gold plates were handed and read this, and here we are in a whole other storyline. So we're finally up to King Limhi. So... It's almost a full circle. Very circular. <clears throat> oh. And also Limhi, being the son of the king, having the kingdom conferred upon him by the people, made an oath unto the king of the Lamanites that his people should pay tribute unto him, even one half of all they possessed. <clears throat> And it came to pass that Limhi began to establish the kingdom and to establish peace among his people. And the king of the Lamanites set guards round about the land that he might keep the people of Limhi in the land that they might not depart into the wilderness. And he did support his guards out of the tribute which he did receive from the Nephites. And now King Limhi did have con continual peace in his kingdom for the space of two years. That the Lamanites did not molest them nor seek to destroy them. And that's the end of uh, chapter 19. So we're Almost done with this whole flashback that was written on gold also. <laughs> and added to this one. Anyway, we're almost back to where we were taken away from, you know. It's just like an an old plot device from an old movie. You know? The old flashback. <sighs> well, if this is an ancient book, it might be the first time that's ever done. <laughs> if it's an ancient book. And uh, you know what I think about that. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck you're having. I'll see you guys in chapter 20.